Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, joining us today um, in this webinar on MATLAB HPC on IBEX cluster. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Shaban, our HPC application engineer at uh, Cloud Supercomputing Core Lab, will be presenting uh, the material along with demos. Uh, so hopefully uh, this will benefit your workflows in future on IBEX. Um, without further ado, I'll uh, hand it over to um, Mr. Shaban, please. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Dr. Mohsen, for this intro. And um, I will be uh, enjoying with you this uh, presentation uh, related to the running MATLAB on HPC and HPC uh, cluster IBEX. Um, during our uh, agenda today will be uh, containing some topics, uh, starting from the first beginning of accessing IBEX and uh, moving along the different uh, jobs uh, or different type of jobs that will be uh, running uh, on the cluster, uh, meaning interactive uh, jobs uh, and batch jobs. Uh, this is our to be serial and parallel, and we will be do, uh, doing a demo uh, related to the HPC add-on, which will be beneficial uh, for the workload uh, that be uh, running on multiple nodes uh, on IBEX cluster. Uh, we will be having at the end of this uh, presentation uh, an introduction on the GPU offloading and the benefits speed up behind that. Uh, so first of all, um, most of you are aware of IBEX cluster and how to log into that, but this is just a quick refresh. Uh, we have the login nodes uh, to, uh, to access IBEX. Uh, we have the I login and we have the G login. Um, G login is mainly used when you need GPU uh, resources. Uh, if you need CPU resources, you will be going to the I login. Uh, after that, uh, you will need to move your data or the uh, running scripts uh, from your workstation or your uh, laptop to the IBEX storage. Uh, we have two types of storage on IBEX, the home storage, which um, is mainly your home directory, the default path when you log into IBEX. And then we have the scratch one, uh, which is the IBEX scratch and your username. And this scratch is where we are doing all the processing uh, on IBEX. It is always recommended to do the processing within your scratch, not within your home directory. Um, currently, we have different versions of um, MATLAB uh, running on IBEX. The latest one is uh, 2020A, and in the near future, uh, we are um, planning to have the 2021 version uh, on IBEX as well. Uh, access to MATLAB uh, is restricted with group access. So uh, if you are a new user to um, IBEX and MATLAB, uh, you will be uh, needing to open with us uh, a ticket and you will be asking to uh, add it to the MATLAB group so you can uh, be able to access the application. We will be having at the end of this uh, session the, um, the email addresses you will be sending uh, this request on. Um, so uh, one more uh, thing to be starting with here is the um, interactive jobs. Uh, so you will be having um, uh, you will be having different types of jobs running on IBEX. Um, one of the first uh, jobs you are able to run uh, will be the um, interactive job. Uh, interactive job is where you will be um, 
uh, you will be able to uh, allocate a compute node and um, this compute node, uh, you will be able to uh, log into it and run uh, the MATLAB as a command line. So um, there is a different uh, versions or different attributes that you can specify to this interactive job. Um, being the time, the number of nodes, the number of tasks, the memory needed. And at the end, you will be uh, asking, asking for the SSH access, which is the slash bin slash bash. Um, after you log into this node, you will be able to uh, do module load for the MATLAB. And then you can type MATLAB uh, dash node display. Uh, where you will be able uh, to have the uh, command prompt for the MATLAB uh, application itself. Uh, another type of nodes uh, or another type of jobs you can run in on uh, IBEX as well uh, is, uh, is interactive job, but this, uh, this one is a GUI access. Uh, you will be having the same uh, allocation you will be doing uh, as before, uh, where you will be able to land on a compute node. And after that, you will be doing the module load, the MATLAB, and then open the MATLAB without uh, adding the dash node display uh, attribute for that. This will be uh, opening for you uh, the MATLAB GUI. And uh, you will be having uh, to enable the X forwarding as the, the MATLAB will be using the X11 forwarding to direct the uh, GUI to your uh, screen. Uh, if you are using a Windows machine, uh, you will need to have the X Mink installed or your Windows machine. Uh, if you are using a Mac uh, OS, you will be having uh, the X quartz installed on it. And for sure, uh, you have to make sure that when you are doing the SSH, uh, you will be uh, doing SSH dash uh, X dash Y uh, to be able to uh, enable the X11 forward. Um, so we, we finished two types of, of jobs uh, related to the MATLAB. Uh, now we are uh, moving to the batch processing, uh, where you are uh, submitting a, a batch job uh, to the cluster. And the Slurm, which is the resource scheduler or resource manager on IBEX, uh, will be responsible for allocating the required um, resources and then running the application uh, as per uh, your need or as per your configuration. So uh, the batch processing, uh, it will always consisting of two parts. Uh, the first part is the resource allocation, uh, where you define some S batch attributes uh, and these attributes will be uh, Targeting for the job allocation, let's say the N capital is for the number of nodes, the N small is for the number of processes or number of tasks. Uh, our partition is the batch, uh, the job name, the output file, and the error file, and the time uh, you are expecting the job to be running. Uh, how uh, many gigabytes of RAM you are required for this uh, submission or uh, you are required for this allocation and then the type of nodes uh, you are addressing to run your uh, simulation or run your uh, MATLAB job. Uh, the second part will be running the application itself. Uh, you are requested to load the required version of the application. Here we are loading the 2019A. And then you are running your code using the MATLAB dash node display and input redirection for the code.m file um, for your MATLAB files. Um, if you, if you uh, uh, check this uh, running, um, we requested only one 
job and this job is consisting of only one uh, process or only one task and uh, therefore uh, the slurm will provide you with only access to this required resources so if your job is already a parallel one or you are using parallelization but you are only requested uh, one task within the job allocation as you can see here you will be only able to run with one worker even you are uh, aiming to to run on more but your job allocation as we see here is only one uh, process so you will not be able to run on any other resources available on the node because during the allocation you only have access to one uh, process or one task so uh, the question here is if I need to run uh, on more workers, uh, how I can do that? So this comes to the next uh, action, which is running on multiple workers. And uh, if you just specify uh, N small uh, with like a 13, so you are requesting an allocation of 13 tasks to be uh, running on, on to, or to be allocated from the slurm side. So our expectations is that when you run the parallel code you have, you will be able to run on the 13th uh, task or 13th uh, process we have. However, uh, from the logs of the MATLAB output, we can see that we are running only on 12 uh, workers, not uh, more than that. And this is because the default configuration within the MATLAB application itself is that you are running only on 12 workers. So regardless what allocation you did on IBEX uh, cluster, which is on the left, so if you requested 20, 40 uh, tasks to be allocated, uh, from the slurm point of view, you will be allocated these resources, but from the MATLAB point of view, because of this default configuration, you will not be able to run uh, on more than 12 uh, workers uh, on, on, uh, on the MATLAB. So uh, the next step we, we need to do uh, is we need to override this default behavior or override the default configuration on uh, the MATLAB and to be able to do that, uh, you will be needing to edit the uh, running script or the matlab.m file uh, on your side. And um, you need to define a local uh, parallel cluster. And then you will be initiating a parallel pool uh, using this parallel cluster. And you are providing uh, to this parallel pool, the number of uh, tasks you are allocating uh, within the job allocation unit. So on the left here, we have allocation of 40 tasks. And on the right, the first line, you are opening the parallel cluster. And then you are starting a parallel pool using the PC parallel cluster. And you are giving the number of workers you are aiming to run, which is the uh, Slurm CPU on nodes, which is a Slurm um, parameter that you will be getting uh, from the Slurm allocation you did. Uh, if you did these steps uh, and we are able to run this job, you will be uh, seeing that you are able to connect it to 40 cores uh, or 40 workers and uh, these workers are able to communicate with each other. Um, so right now, uh, all of this um, processing uh, is the targeting only one node where you will be able to run uh, a parallel pool or parallel cluster and um, the basic implementation for that is when you are running a parallel for par4 on the MATLAB 
and you need to parallelize this par four and using many workers to do for you the uh, parallel work you need. Uh, one of the um, most recent uh, issues that we are seeing while users are uh, doing the parallel pool uh, processing on IBEX uh, is that if you run multiple jobs and these multiple jobs uh, are uh, running par pool or parallel pool within these jobs, we are seeing that misbehavior of the jobs and they are not uh, completing successfully. And the reason behind that is the parallel pool will be needing a temporary location to store files and uh, temporary files and temporary data where these data are used for the worker synchronization. The default location uh, where the MATLAB will be saving these temporary files uh, is the hidden directory dot matlab under your home directory. So your home, your username and dot, dot matlab will be the default location for storage these temporary files. Uh, and that is why there is conflict happening because if you are running two jobs simultaneously and these jobs are using the parallel pool and trying to store the temporary uh, files within the dot matlab uh, directory uh, you will be uh, having a, an issues with the synchronization and you will be ending up uh, with the parallel pool is not functioning well or even it will be uh, stopping from work so the workaround or the configuration need to be done here to be able to um, to run simultaneous uh, jobs that are using the parallel pool together is that you override this default uh, job storage location. And you can uh, do that simply by uh, two steps. The first step is in the batch file, uh, you are doing a temporary directory. For example, here, uh, we are doing under the scratch your scratch, which will be the uh, slash scratch slash your username. And you will be doing a, a, a slurm, a, a directory with the slurm job ID. Uh, so if you are submitting multiple jobs, uh, each job will be having a unique slurm job ID. And you can create a temporary directory under your scratch with this uh, job ID. The second step is uh, you are requested within your MATLAB file to uh, explicitly uh, set the job storage location to this path. So you will be creating a parallel cluster. And uh, then you are uh, specifying for the uh, parallel cluster uh, the job storage location, which will be the scratch and then uh, the slurm job ID uh, you are uh, running within. Uh, so by that, you will be having multiple uh, job storage location, and each one will be dedicated to a single uh, running job. Uh, and that could be uh, very helpful to avoid the conflict while running multiple jobs. Um, so by, by then, we, we are finished the part related to the single nodes. Um, and now we are targeting another type of uh, jobs. And these jobs are uh, when you need to distribute the running on multiple nodes. Uh, and here comes the... Um, what we are calling the HPC add-on, uh, which is a, a developed uh, tool uh, in-house, in uh, that will be uh, helping the users uh, to scale the jobs to run on multiple nodes. I will be uh, stopping the sharing from the slides, and uh, I will be doing uh, 
a video and this video will be uh, demonstrating how you will be able to run on multiple nodes using the HPC add-on. Uh, I will be starting with a, a, a video. This video will be just uh, uh, demonstrating how you will be able to use the HPC add-on. Uh, and the second demo uh, will be just a demonstration for how you can uh, span or scale your job on multiple nodes uh, using the HPC add-on. So uh, this uh, link, uh, it is shared on the IBEX uh, website, and it is uh, how to, you can run on multiple nodes on IBEX cluster. Um, so the basic steps that you need to do uh, while uh, running the MATLAB is before you can scale on multiple nodes, you will be uh, testing that your um, code is able to scale. So um, as you can see here, that you can run your um, a code on a single node using 4, 8, 16, 32 tasks. And if you find your codes are um, scalable enough and you are getting a, a good performance uh, by using multiple uh, workers, uh, then it is a good potential that if you uh, increase the number of uh, workers across multiple nodes, that you will be getting uh, this scalability as well. So uh, we always recommend before start using the multiple nodes or start using the HPC add-on, you need to first uh, test the scalability of the codes running on a single node using different workers for 8, 16, 32. And uh, once you find a good uh, scalability for, uh, for the, uh, your codes, uh, it is good you start exploring the option of multiple or running on multiple nodes. So using the HPC add-on, you have two steps. As the first step, will be uh, running or you'll be doing it on your um, workstation or your remote workstation. Uh, and the, the second steps will be doing it during uh, opening the MATLAB UI. So the first steps, uh, as you can see here, uh, it will be uh, loading the MATLAB and then uh, doing uh, the clone for the uh, get uh, came out from the GitLab we have. Uh, so here I am opening a terminal on a remote workstation. And uh, I will be checking for the available MATLABs we have. Uh, currently, uh, version 2016B uh, is the one we are able to run with the HPC add-on. And uh, in the future, we are planning for adding more um, version for that. Um, here I will be uh, doing the cloning for the key mat from the get repo. Uh, I already did this in the training MATLAB 2021. Um, directory so I will be moving to that uh, once I did this um, you can see the kmat uh, directory uh, created and you will be having all the needed files within the kmat uh, I need to export uh, this path to the MATLAB path so the MATLAB will be able to see the configuration file and uh, the needed 
uh, libraries uh, within this uh, directory. Uh, then I will be uh, opening the MATLAB GUI. Uh, here, uh, as I said, uh, we are using the uh, MATLAB uh, 2016B. Uh, the second steps uh, is some uh, is is configuration and running the parallel cluster uh, on the uh, GUI itself. Uh, so uh, I am just uh, waiting for a few seconds and then you have the prompt for the MATLAB. Uh, you start by doing the config cluster command. Uh, we then choose the Intel and because this is the one available on IBIX cluster. Uh, sometimes uh, you can see some uh, old configurations that are uh, being uh, directed or being written within uh, the, using the MATLAB KMAT. So uh, to be able to uh, remove these old configurations, you need to remove the .matlab hidden file. Uh, and you can restart again the MATLAB. Uh, so you can be able to uh, do a fresh running. Uh, within the MATLAB configuration itself. Uh, I intentionally kept this uh, part within the demo because uh, this is uh, one of the uh, common uh, issues that when you are trying to set up the MATLAB and you have a previous trials, uh, you may facing some errors uh, while setting up the uh, MATLAB HPC add-on. And uh, that will be good uh, to do this refresh for the uh, cluster. Once you are uh, done with the uh, cluster config, you need to, to initiate um, a parallel cluster. And this parallel cluster will be naming as Intel. The next steps after that is you are setting the required time uh, to be able uh, to run jobs. Uh, for the testing here, I am putting just 10 minutes as the whole time uh, for the jobs. After that, I will be um, running a batch uh, job using this um, using this uh, Intel uh, parallel cluster. As you can see here, the syntax um, is Intel dot batch, and then you put the dot M five uh, you are requesting to run. And then you are specifying that you are running on a pool configuration. And after that, you will be uh, putting the number of, um, of workers you are need to be uh, using within this um, batch job. Uh, so this is just a, a demonstration for the how to use the, um, uh, the batch, uh, the HPC add-on. So uh, once you, 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 you have the job, uh, the matlab.m5 you are trying to run, you can allocate it from your uh, passes. I, for, for my side, I do it in the documents. Uh, I need to add this uh, pass to the MATLAB and then uh, we'll be uh, supplying the name of the dot uh, m file and take care you don't need to do the dot m you just need to put the name of the file without the dot m uh, and then we are submitting the job uh, within a few uh, seconds uh, you uh, will be getting uh, on the prompt that the job is submitted to uh, the cluster And then we can check together uh, the states. Here, um, it is asking 
uh, how to uh, log into IBEX cluster. Uh, again, just for the uh, clarifying for that. Uh, here, we are using a remote workstation. So we are not uh, on IBEX cluster yet. So this configuration we are doing on our remote workstation. And this is the idea behind the HPC add-on uh, where you are scaling your jobs. Uh, you having on your workstation and you needed to submit it to the cluster and you be scaled. So uh, during the submission uh, from your workstation, you will be a, a needing to log into IBEX. So, we'll be, uh, so the configurations here or the steps here are required uh, or asking you how you need to log into IBEX cluster. And um, if you can see here, as a prompt will be uh, asking you uh, using an identity file to log into the ilogin.ivex.cousin.edu.sa and you should specify yes for that. Uh, once you said yes, it will prompt you for uh, a location or where the identity file you have, it is on the .ssh uh, comma uh, directory and then it is the identity file IDRSA uh, and this file is not protected with a password so I say no and then you will be able to uh, run the uh, job on IBEX cluster uh, as you can see here uh, the the jobs I I uh, requested a four uh, jobs a job for uh, workers and the job ID is twenty four and this job ID will be uh, helping me to track uh, the jobs I am running. <clears throat> Sorry. So um, here uh, I am going to the documents uh, MATLAB jobs. And then uh, the version of math uh, lab I am using is on Intel, on Intel parallel cluster. And then it is R uh, 2016B. You have uh, all the jobs you are running using the HPC add-on will be stored here. And as we checked before, this is the 24, job to number 24. Uh, you can uh, check the logs, the job 24.log. Um, so this job is running uh, using four uh, workers. So I am expecting to see uh, four workers that are communicating with each other. And, and as you can see here, we have the four workers communicating to each other for that. Um, I'm just checking uh, the questions. So yeah, this, uh, the slides will be shared on uh, the training uh, website. So um, yeah, you can, you can just take notes as you wish and this will be also shared. Um, regarding, the, um, regarding the license, 10,000 license, uh, yes, this is, um, this was a recent update from the licensing team um that we have uh, pumped up the number of workers uh, to be uh, 10,000. Uh, I myself didn't test uh, such a large number of workers to be running together. Um, the maximum number I uh, tested was about a few hundreds, but uh, moving to the thousand scale, uh, I didn't test it before. Um, so uh, the jobs are stored on uh, on two locations. Uh, 
Um, here, as we can see, this location is on your workstation, uh, but there is also a temporary location uh, on the IBEX cluster because, of course, you are running on IBEX and it will be needing a temporary location where uh, it will be storing the files. And after it finish the configuration, uh, finish the, the processing on IBEX cluster, it will be returning back the output files, the log files, uh, to the uh, local storage on your workstation, which is the document MATLAB, jobs, Intel, or has been uh, targeted by uh, your processor. Uh, so for the Nest cluster, um, I have to check for the uh, for the latest version on that, but I believe it is uh, 2020 as well. Uh, the HPC add-on, uh, which we specifically targeting by this demo, uh, is as I said, it is running on the 2016B, but on Nest you can run on single nodes with the available versions of MATLAB. So you are not uh, restricted with 2016B on Nest. You can use whatever you need, but for the HPC add-on, which I mean by scaling on multiple nodes, uh, still for now we are uh, running using the 2016B. So uh, one more question regarding the limit of 10,000 uh, licenses. Um, so um, we have in KAUST what, uh, what we call MATLAB distributed computing licenses, uh, which is if, um, a floating licenses that will be shared among all the users. Uh, the limit uh, used before to be 600. So if you are, if we have like ten users and uh, each user will be using hundred of them, so we were limited to the uh, six hundred cap, and the other users will be getting a license uh, errors. Uh, right now, uh, this has been pumped up to ten thousand, which means that ten thousand concurrent users can be running at the same time. So uh, if you are uh, requesting to have uh, 100 workers, so uh, this 100 worker will be consuming from the 10,000. If one of the users, for example, running a job with the 10,000, if it is applicable uh, and it is supported by the MATLAB. Uh, so this means that any other user trying to uh, running a similar jobs will be getting that the license are not available. Um, I'm uh, getting back to the uh, HPC add-on and uh, now I will be also uh, sharing with you uh, a demo, uh, how you demonstrate running on multiple nodes so I will be uh, stopping this and sharing another one. So to be able to demonstrate uh, the running on uh, on multiple nodes, 
I will be uh, setting a user defined option, uh, limiting the number of tasks per node to be 10. Uh, and I will be requesting an, a, a job with 19 worker. And uh, here uh, I need to mention as well that the parallel uh, running will be need to add one worker uh, as an orchestrator or the master worker to be um, running this um, MATLAB uh, parallel distributed uh, computing server. So uh, if you can see here, uh, I requested 19 worker and the number of running uh, will be 20 because one of the workers will be added uh, for the uh, master one. And here, if, if you can see, we are able to run on two nodes. And here is the job number 30, which is our reference. Uh, I will be uh, then moving to the uh, logs location and the output location for the job uh, 30 to be able to check the status and getting the output uh, of the running uh, job. Uh, here I'm checking the log file. Uh, here as well, you can see the machines uh, that we are running on. There are two machines. Here we have uh, logs from each worker. So this is for work number 15. I will check in the logs one more time. And here we can see that the message that the MATLAB is about to exit normally. And that is mean we are done with the processing. Then I will be checking the output file. And as you can see here, we have 19 workers that are communicating with each other, running on two different compute nodes. So uh, this was a demonstration for the HPC add-on running on single node and running on multiple nodes. Um, I will be uh, getting back to the uh, slides and uh, uh, covering uh, few more topics related to running on the GPUs as well. Uh, one of the um, beneficial uh, ways of running uh, jobs on IBEX is using the job arrays. And uh, this uh, way of running the jobs is very useful and beneficial when you are trying to run the same code or the same job for many times but you need just to tweak or to uh, change something different in the configurations or for the running parameters. So uh, let's say you are running with the parameter, uh, say it's it number uh, like the number, uh, uh, an input parameter called A or an input parameter called number of iterations. And you need to uh, submit multiple runs and each run will be running with a different number of iterations. So for example, uh, one, two, three, and so on. So to be able to use the job arrays to, to run that, uh, you simply uh, need to add in the job allocation that you will be running with array. And this array is ranging from one to three uh, as the IDs for each uh, array job and you can uh, using uh, one of the slurm uh, environment variables 
which is called the Slurm Array Task ID. And for each one of the job arrays, uh, you will be having three jobs, uh, one and two and three. And each one will be having a corresponding Slurm Array Task ID. So in the first run, the Slurm Array Task ID will be having the value of one. Uh, in the second uh, job, the Slurm Array Task ID will be having the value of two. And the third will be having the value of three. And you can be using these uh, different values to uh, running or to adding uh, whatever you need in your jobs. For example, I have here a hierarchy of three uh, different directories called data underscore one, data underscore two, data underscore three. And I need each job uh, to be running on this specific directory. So I will be using the same MATLAB code I have, which is code.m. But each time I need to run on a different data. So that underscore one, that underscore two, that underscore three. So within the batch script, I will be doing a, a CD, which is chain directory, to the location corresponding for each one. So as we said, in the first uh, job array, I will be having the Slurm array task ID uh, one, uh, two, and three. And then I can be changing to the corresponding directory I have. And by then you can have the same code running, but each time will be accessing different data as you need. Uh, if you are checking the uh, running um, jobs after submitting the job array, uh, you will be having the job ID the same, but each one will be having the uh, array ID uh, corresponding to each one. Uh, one more uh, and final um, topic to be uh, going through here is offloading to the GPUs. Uh, so if you are uh, requesting uh, a GPU on IBEX cluster, uh, first you need to uh, log in to the G login. And then you need to add the uh, required uh, parameter or the required allocation parameter within your job allocation or job script. So uh, here uh, we have uh, two configurations. Uh, the one on the left is uh, any available GPU because we didn't specify the type of GPU we need. Uh, on the right, uh, we have specified the uh, GPU type to be the V100. And um, we only requesting one GPU card uh, to be able to use. Um, once you did the allocation and you are uh, able to uh, open the MATLAB uh, command prompt, if you use the GPU device uh, MATLAB command, you will be get, getting um, details of the available uh, GPU you are landing on. So if you are uh, specifying a specific uh, type of GPU, uh, you are expecting to get the V100s as you specify. If you didn't specify the GPU, you will be getting uh, any one of the available one. And here we are getting the GTX um, 1080 uh, as for an example. Uh, here, I am just comparing between the matrix matrix multiplication uh, using CPUs and using GPUs. Uh, so um, we have a random uh, matrix uh, of size 10,000. And first iterations, we did the uh, matrix matrix multiplication on the CPU side. And the second part, we are uh, defining a GPU array using the same matrix. And we are doing the matrix matrix multiplication, but uh, this time we are using it, or we are processing it using the GPU's uh, array we, we defined. Uh, and as you can see, there is 
uh, a significant difference between uh, the using the GPUs and using the CPUs. So here we have like 23 seconds versus 0.2 seconds. And even by adding the uh, time uh, to gather the data from the GPU back to the client, we are still uh, in a much good uh, shape and, and, and uh, faster than using the uh, CPUs only during the, the uh, matrix matrix multiplication. Um, here are some uh, useful links uh, you need to be checking for IBEX. Uh, we have the IBEX website. We have the IBEX job generator script and the recent uh, IBEX flyer, which uh, was updated uh, this month. Uh, please check these links and um, get back to us if you have any questions. Um, thank you very much for having this discussion and having this uh, training. Uh, please feel free to reach to uh, our emails as below for the, any issues related to uh, IBEX cluster, either on the application side or on the systems side. Thank you. Thanks, Shaban. Uh, I think there are a few questions that you want, might want to answer in the Q&A box. Um, so, uh, yes, I already uh, walked through this question within the um, answering in the middle of the session. So, um, I, if uh, there is any questions that are not answered, uh, please um, let us know. I'm seeing here one more question. Is this a particular difference between clusters to use? How shall we decide which one to use? So uh, we always start with the Intel, uh, as this is the uh, one which we are uh, testing frequently and we are using uh, at the same time, uh, at the current time. Uh, as I said, in the near future, we are uh, planning to uh, have more flavors of the clusters available, like the AMD ones. Uh, so we'll be uh, getting soon to you with more on that, uh, the difference between the clusters and how to use them. But for now, the recommended one, if you are use, uh, an IBEX user, uh, you, you, you shall use the Intel a cluster uh, to be running on that. Uh, if you need to uh, to using on, uh, let's say for the Nest cluster, uh, please um, get back to us and we can uh, check with you how to run your uh, HPC add-on on the Nest cluster as well. Great, thanks. Um, are there any other questions, queries before we close the session? Fabulous. Um, but thank you all for attending. Um, hopefully you uh, got um, good information on how to run MATLAB on HPC cluster, uh, IBEX and MATLAB. Um, so we are looking forward to your feedback. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Mohsen. Thanks, Shaban. Thank you. Bye.